If you follow my channel, you've seen that I built a Voron 0.1 just a few months back. The build was somehow complicated, very, very interesting, but at the same time, the fact that you have to build from scratch everything and attach every screw, print every part, can sometimes put back people that wants to build a, a 3D printer like this one, a VORM. And if you watch that video that I did before, I was talking about how complicated things are and you have to measure everything and be very precise with everything. And now I want to show you and I want to talk about the big brother, the Voron 2.4, and let you know if I think that it's more complicated to build a V01 or a 2.4. So come with me and let's see what's, what are my thoughts around this topic. If you're building open source projects, you need a good source for printed circuit boards. PCBWay is that partner that can help you bring your ideas to reality, especially in projects like building a board. PCBWay is right now hosting an innovation contest. Go to their website, sign up, and enjoy this opportunity to create something cool and earn some prizes in the process. A quick recap for those ones of you that doesn't know what a Voron is. Voron is a brand. It's a, it's a set of guidelines that the very smart people have put together to give anyone the chance to build their own 3D printer with parts that are easily found. You don't have to go to any manufacturer to get specific parts. You can get those parts that you use to build these, these uh, printers kind of from everywhere because they are somehow standards. Voron doesn't produce anything. They just do guidelines. They have manuals. They have, they tell you how you should be printing your parts. They have designed every part that you're going to be using, the plastic parts that you're going to be using on their printers. They have designed that and they have the manuals of how to assemble everything. As I mentioned before, in the past I built a 0.1 because it was it's a small printer that I could have kind of whatever I wanted and it's pretty powerful and excellent quality. So I didn't think that I needed anything else. But the shop has been growing, the demand for 3, 3D printed parts has been growing and now I see myself in the need of having more space or more uh, area to print so I can print faster the same part many times. And that's the main reason why I decided to go with one of these ones, the big one. It's still at 300 by 300 millimeters area. There is still a bigger one that is 350, but it was already a problem for me to find space for, space for this one at home. So this one was uh, what I chose and it's working pretty well for me. Digging a little bit deeper into building a 2.0, I have to say a few things. Number one is the manual tells you almost everything that you need to do. I heard that in the past people complained that the manual was not very user friendly towards beginners, but I'm, I'm considering myself still a beginner, even though I have built a 0.1 and this is my third printer. But with the manual, and the help of YouTube, you have kind of everything that you need. Of course, there are small questions here and there, especially when you get to start tuning the, the printer, that you might need more help from people that knows much more. And that's why Discord is your friend when it comes to building and tuning and using these printers. But in all honesty, I can tell you that I went to the YouTube to check something specific, maybe two, three times in the whole build. Um, as I'm saying, I think the instructions were very clear. And one thing that I have to say about the 2.4 compared to the 01 is that somehow the 2.4, I'm guessing that because of the size, it's a little bit more forgiven when you are building things. When I built the 0.1, again, it could be because it was the first one, I felt that everything had to be to the millimeter, you know, like I couldn't make a small mistake because then things wouldn't work. With the 2.4, I felt that it was oh, more relaxing 
I didn't have to be so scared about everything. But what is true is that this time I had some concepts in my head that are important when you're building a Vorum. You have to have everything square, you have to know, uh, you have to build the parts, you have to print the parts with the right parameters so they are the right size and they work well and they match where they have to match and these kind of things. So I think as long as you follow what they're telling you on the manuals, how to print your parts, what material to use, and you are careful reading those things and not just blasting through the manual, the building process of a 2.4, it's relatively easier than a 0.1. In fact, this one took me a lot of time. It took me, I would say, around three weeks to build, one hour here, one hour there, which I thought that I would never finish building this printer. But in terms of complexity compared to the Zero One, I think this one is a little bit simpler. You can also say that you you're never done with a 3D printer because you're always modding them or you're always tuning for a specific filament or something like that. But when I say that I, it took me three weeks to build it, it's thinking about putting all the pieces together, configuring the software and tuning it to a point where you get something that you are satisfied with the quality. I normally print on TPU most of it because of the drone parts and it took me a little bit of time to tune the TPU to work on this one. One thing very important to mention here is that I went with a kit. I didn't source the parts separately by myself because if building the printer took me three weeks just having everything in front of me and putting it together, imagine if I had to choose every part and buy it from different places. Here I have to say it, I went with the LDO kit and I have to give a very thanks to Jason from LDO that helped me get one of these kits. And in my opinion, the kit is perfect. It brings everything that you need. It has a lot of spare screws and things that you can use. It brings some important mods or modifications like the, like the clicky, uh, like the brush to clean your nozzle in the process the Nevermore filter as well, and it even has the electronics or everything that you need to do input shaper, which again, you have everything in that kit to build a very good printer with all the small extra details that you want to have to print easily and with, with the very, very good quality. So shout out to LDO for doing these kind of things. I know there are other printers, other kits out there. I think this one is fantastic quality wise. I'm super happy and everything that it comes with the kit helped me get to this state without having to go and find more parts and do more things. Of course, there is a lot of people that love that part as well and looking for the best quality for rails or the screws and all that. And if you have the time and you want to do it, go ahead. That's part of the fun of building your own thing. But if you are like me and you have the time counted and you are not having this much time to just do everything that you want, a kit, it's perfect. And the LDO kit, very good quality. One thing that saved me a lot of time in this kit that I think other kits have also, is that the cables they are already crimped and cut to kind of the right length. There are some still very long, but I never found anything that was too short and I had to redo it. I could use all of them and the instructions are very clear where to put each one of the cables. So that part saved me a lot of time compared to the regular guidelines from Voron Manual. And that's something that if you are short on time, I would recommend you very much. Go with a kit that has the cables correctly done and you're gonna save a ton of time. In my opinion, building from a kit has one issue. The manufacturer of the kit or the, or the company putting the kit together has 
to have some extra instructions for you because they have chose something and they want you to print a part that is specific for that and it might not be the same part that the Vorum manual is telling you. That means that at some point on your installation, you're gonna find yourself with two set of instructions. And if you haven't read beforehand both of them carefully, you might not know when do you have to jump from one to the other. And this was something that was a little bit annoying for me because I was following one guide and then suddenly, oh, I realized I didn't have that part and I had to go and print. And then I realized, no, I didn't have to print it because it was from this other manual. And it was completely my fault because I, re I didn't read complete both guides beforehand enough to understand when did I have to jump from one to the other? But at the same time, it's, it's a little bit annoying that you cannot just follow one guide and do everything from one place. So a recommendation from my side is read the manuals carefully before you start building everything. Kind of do a, a dry run in your head of what you're gonna do. Uh, especially when it comes to the mods. The, the mods, they have different options like if we're talking about the clicky for example you have the clicky ng you have the the regular clicky and you have to decide which one are you going to take and which one are you going to build beforehand otherwise you're gonna end like me having a bunch of parts that you didn't need and you printed too much so follow my recommendation and don't do like me read things beforehand and create some kind of plan so you are clear when are you jumping from one guy to the other and which parts do you need to print for all the mods and everything that is a little bit different than the official Voron manual. I love the fact that this LDO kit has these mods directly included all the parts like for the LEDs, I love how the, the, the cage looks when it's illuminated and you can have a camera looking at it and control everything remotely from your app or your computer. The clicky, it's something that I think it should be kind of default on all the forums. It helps so much. It's so cool to see how the head picks up using magnets that probe and test all the parts in your bed. And then more interesting enough is the fact that you can use that same probe to adjust your offset from the bed, which makes your life so much easier because you don't have to think about it if you change the nozzle or if you change the flex plate. You don't have to do any change of configuration because the, the, this mod, the auto set, takes care of it using the clicky. It's pretty cool how it works. Now I feel that if I'm going to print something, I just upload it and click, and the printer will take care of everything by itself. I don't have to brush the nozzle. I don't have to check if the, I need to readjust the, the offset of the, of the flex plate. Even if I change the nozzle, I don't have to do anything. The printer does everything automatically, and that's super cool. And again, it's super cool that all that comes in the LDO kit already. I'm gonna close this video saying the following. If I could build this printer, anyone can build it. You just need to have patience. You just need to read. You just need to have an account in this court to ask and access to the YouTube. If you have those things, it's not gonna be that complicated. Follow the things carefully as described on the manuals and you're gonna have a very good printer in your hands, getting very good quality parts, and you're going to be very satisfied. So don't listen to that, those people on the internet saying that this is some kind of rocket science, because if you were, you were a kid, you play a little bit with Lego, and you, or you are interested on building things by yourself, it's not rocket science. This is something that you can do just need time, patience, and be able to read. A printer like this is gonna give you fun during the process of building and after the process of building. 
and it's gonna teach you so much about your printer that when you are done with it, you're going to understand almost everything, how it works. And if something happens in the future, it's going to be very easy for you to repair or to handle those problems. So I really recommend you to go and try this if you are interested in 3D printers. And if you like building and doing your own things, this is going to teach you a lot. It's going to show you a lot and you're gonna end up with one of the best printers that I have seen. This is all that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Thank you.